Well, obviously you can see that it's peony season. Um, we're at the very end though, because it's been hot. It's been hot, 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 crazy. Too warm for June in Michigan, in my estimation. But I hope that it's cyclical and it will, you know, I don't know, figure it out. But it's been warm. So uh, peonies are all blooming, all blooming, 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 blooming. So this might be the last batch that we're able to harvest in the garden. I think that's probably pretty safe to say. But then other stuff's all coming on. So that's really awesome. So it is um, actually the day I'm taping this for you is a Sunday. And so I got up early this morning. I love that early morning in the garden. It's really nice um, just going out there just as the sun's coming up and it's just really lovely. And I did a lot of work out there this morning too. Not only did I harvest all the peonies and get those cleaned up because they were on the bushes and they were just hanging down. And so I got those, those cleaned up. But I also got rid of the, uh, my hardy geraniums, blue hardy geraniums. We've got a couple. That's this guy right here. Huh? He's right here. I wonder if I can get him out of here. Yeah, there he is. That's the blue hardy geranium. Look at that. He's pretty, right? And this is like the last one because the rest of them had all started to go to seed and they had the little cranes bill on them. And so when they have the cranes bill on them, you know that they're going to go to seed. Always make sure you deadhead your geraniums. That's really super important because then you'll get more flushes of of uh, flowers for the rest of the year. And my geraniums were overhanging in a bunch of other stuff. There was some hostas underneath them and then some hydrangeas underneath them and some lilies underneath them. So that's all cleaned up. So yeah, and, and Claudia, I know that you're after me to um, to do a garden tour. So I'm gonna get to that, I, I promise, I promise, I promise. I'm trying to figure out how to, my Wi-Fi isn't very strong outside. It's strong inside, but it's not strong outside. And so I'm trying to figure out how I can boost that a little bit because that would be super helpful. So we'll see what happens. So I thought it would be fun for us. Obviously, Sunday is the day that I grab my favorite beverage. I turn on the music, um, Dave Cos Lounge or whatever I want to listen to, Sirius XM. And um, somebody asked me that the other day. So on uh, Monday through Friday, I listen to um, uh, Sirius XM Channel 33 First Wave and Sluggo, Doug Sluggo. That's what I listen to during the week. And then sometimes I listen to that. I like to catch Casey Kasem's um, top 40 for the seventies. I listen to that. And I love to listen to studio 54 and I love to listen to uh, watercolors. And that's where I hear Dave Koz on Sundays. And then I also like to listen to real jazz and I have some other yacht rock, some other, I, you know, so I, I it's all over the place. And I'm ex very excited to tell you that our downloads for our music, How to Arrange Flowers, are available um, on Bandcamp now with uh, my friend Ben Scott Brand. And they're also available on Spotify, too, so you can listen to that. So there's a whole soundtrack, 40, 40 minutes, 45 minutes of, of music to arrange flowers by. So you can, you can check that out. The download is, you can download it for $10, and then you have it forever. That's awesome. Okay, so check that out. And we'll have we'll have hard CDs coming soon. They've been ordered, but they're not here yet. So I'll let you know when they're here. I'll show it to you. Okay, so there's that. So I thought it would be fun for us. And obviously today is the day that I fill the house with flowers. So yesterday I went through and I had had flowers for about two weeks in the house. And so all the vases needed to be cleaned. They needed to be washed. The stuff needed to go out of the compost pile. And so that's what I did. And um, I had a lot of things that were left over from our production a couple weeks ago. Of carnations were just exquisite and they lasted forever. And so now I'm filling the house with flowers again. So I figured it would be fun for us to make a couple of fun arrangements together as part of that as well. So I cut some foliage. The foliage is starting to get beautiful out there. So I figured we could make something big maybe to start with today in this vase. I love this vase. Um, it's a pressed glass vase and it's from Accent Decor. And I like it because it sits on the credenza in between like the in the great room between the living room and the kitchen or the dining room. And it just looks pretty. And so when I was cutting this mock orange this morning, I thought, oh, this is going to be beautiful. This will be beautiful for it because it can, it can hang out there. Look at that. Look at how pretty that is, right? So I've gotten so many nice notes from y'all about, um, see y'all, that that's the little bit of Atlanta creeping back in there with me, but about how you share the videos with your mom or with other people or that, you know, it's just fun. My friend, um, sh uh, uh, so I gotta say this right. I say, I used to say Shalini, Shalini. 
Shalini is um, who watches too. And you know, all, all of these people that watch are just, it's wonderful. I just love that y'all watch and that we make some really cool stuff. This is mock orange. My mock orange has yet to bloom. I know, makes me crazy. It has been out there for, I don't know, 20 years, 25 years probably. And it still has not yet bloomed. This is off my Huchera, which is really pretty. And it's just the seed pods, but the foliage is so incredible. I love how this wants to turn around on me. Look at that. And so I'll keep moving it back as I put things in here. But again, what I'm doing is I'm starting off and getting a little structure going inside here first so that we have something that's going to hold our flowers in place. I got up early this morning. Um, it was about 7 o'clock, and I went out and cut everything. Now, look at What are you going to do? You're going to want to misbehave. So I'm going to turn you. Let's see if you still want to turn. Yeah, maybe there. That's better. Okay. Um, so I, you know, it, it, everybody wanted to, I wanted to go out there and get the, get the things cut early in the morning because I don't want to cut them after it starts to get hot and it's already 80 degrees out there. So I do not want to be out there cutting. And this is the variegated grasses that I have. I love that. And sometimes I will just go out and cut off like half of this whole bush and bring it in the house. I love it. It's just beautiful. And so I just continue to, I like to have that in the house too, because I just think that it's really pretty and it looks gardeny. My friend Else Tunison, who lives in Des Moines, um, one time I went to visit her and she had cut down almost like little saplings and stuff and brought them in the house and put them in vases all over her house for an evening when I was there. Hi, I'm back here. I'm back here. Down here, over here, around, so you can see. But anyway, she had these beautiful vases all over the house with these trees and things, and it was just amazing. And she had candles lit, and we just sat and visited, and we had sushi, and we had wine, and we just talked and solved all the problems of the world. It was just wonderful. And so I think about that frequently, and I'm like, I want, I like that, and I like that idea. So I wanted to, you know, I, I kind of like that feeling in the house, and so I really love that. The hostas are going crazy outside. It has been an incredible year for hostas. And I have cut a lot of hosta blooms. Um, the hostas are starting to bloom this week. And so because they're blooming, I'm going to put those in arrangements too. Um, I belong to a hosta group on Facebook. And um, somebody was there writing in the other day and they were saying, can I cut my hostas? Can I... And, you know, and I'm just like, I cut everything. I, I cut everything all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, you can cut your hostas. Cut your hostas, please. Um, but some people believe you shouldn't. I'm not that person. So, I, you know, as you know, my theory is a range plant. And I, everything that is in my garden is up for grabs when it comes to arranging. Anything can be cut and arranged at any time. So it is not a, I don't know, some people, some people, you know, I, I, I've talked about this many times that people always say, and it's even in, it's even in an episode of Life in Bloom, we started off in the peony beds out in the garden. And I was like, you know, people are always asking me about what, you know, What's your garden? What's your garden like? Your, your gardens must be just absolutely fabulous. It must just be absolutely incredible. And I'm like, well, you know, I mean, I guess, I mean, they're pretty and everything, but at the same time, I cut out of them. So, you know, some things get cut back. And like all these peonies, because of the rain and stuff, were all um, down on the ground. You know, they were just, they were down on the ground. And so I went through and, and many of the, I, you know what? The other thing I love, I know I'm still back here, right? I gotcha. Hi. Okay. Um, one of the things that I absolutely love was when I was cutting these this morning and the, and some of the bigger, older blooms were um, falling apart and falling down onto the ground. And suddenly I was standing there in an entire, you know, like about three inches of peony blooms and I just loved it. I mean, I just thought, oh, this is really fun. This is beautiful and it looks great. And I just love that they're all just kind of laying down there on the ground. That's awesome. So 
This is this is going to be pretty. And you know what? It's going to smell terrific. And it's going to last a couple of days. Because, you know, peonies aren't the longest lasting people in the it, flowers in the world. You know, but um, they're going to look great. And it's going to bring a whole lot of enjoyment to me. And that's the most important thing. I want you to remember that when you're arranging flowers, that the person I want you to please first is yourself. Look at how this guy's all pendulous. Look at that, right? And so I'm going to put him in a spot where he can continue to keep doing that. Look at that. Uh, uh, right there. And, you know, just how fun it is to, you know, because, yeah, I could leave these out in the yard and they would get sprinkled on. They would get rained on. They would get, you know, more stuff and, and you know, things would happen and all that kind of stuff. Or I can bring them in the house. I can make a fabulous arrangement like this and I can enjoy it for several days. And when I wake up in the morning and I'm drinking my coffee, I've got a beautiful bouquet like this that's sitting on the table and it's greeting me when I walk out of the bedroom. I love that. And I want that for you too. I just think that we should, should be doing more of that. You know, it having these bouquets in our home is super, super helpful for our health and wellness. Or if we give them to somebody as a gift, I'm sorry you can't see me. I'm not really hiding back here, but I'm just, you know, it's a big arrangement, right? So, um, I was amazed too that this morning when I was taking them out, that sometimes they would just explode. And I think that's so fun. I just think it's really fun when a, when a flower petals kind of explode and go everywhere. I just think that that's really fun. Now I have got a couple of singles here. I'm sorry you can't see them back here, but it's just a single bloom like that. Okay. And it's short. And I've got a couple holes where I'm just going to stick it down in to fill it out and be down inside there. Um, someone the other day said that um, the bouquets look like, um, you know, uh, paint, like, you know, Renaissance paintings and stuff. What a comp what a huge compliment. That's so nice of you to say that. Um and so I kind of think about that when I'm when I'm creating them and I want to create them and make them look a little bit like those Renaissance paintings. Okay. And look, I got a couple of these Brunera, Brunaria, Brun, Brunaria heart-shaped um, Jack Frost. It's called Jack Frost is the name of the of the flower. And or of the of the plant. And so I want to stick some of those heart shaped. It's the one that looks like forget me not. The flowers look like forget me not, but they're not. And one more piece of hosta. So I put this piece of hosta in here. Look right there, right there, so that it could kind of get out in the middle of everybody and see everybody a little bit more. I have one more piece of the mock orange too. And I'm going to put that right back here in the middle. And you know what? I'm kind of using it as topping because as we start to talk about these looking like Renaissance paintings, I don't want it to be just all flowers. I want there to be some foliage in there too. So see, look at that now. Look at this guy over here. I like that he comes way out over there. I think that that's really nice. And he'll he'll have a really nice place in the living room when I do that, where he can just be out in the middle of everything. And I will just sometimes, I will always fuss with these. That's the other thing about me is I will come back in and always check on them. And add something or subtract something. I want a few more of these in the middle. What's going on there? There we go. That's nice. Ah, 
I don't know. Hold on. I'm just thinking I want a couple more right here. And I think I want one more peony there, but I need a long one. Look at this one. It's going to be perfect. So I want it to be right about there. Oh, see, I need one more next to it now. You know, when you make a big arrangement like this, I think it's true that you can just continue to add to it. Oh, see, that was perfect. That's perfect. Okay, I'm really happy with that now. Now, final step always is to use my Chrysler Professional Glory. Okay, because that's gonna help these peonies retain their moisture. And I'm running the air conditioner in the house, so it's gonna be drier inside here. And so having a coating of that on here is just gonna be fantastic. That little guy, he's, you know, it's kind of hard for me to spin it. If this guy's too long when I get it upstairs, I may, you know, I may take that down a little bit, but I don't think so. And you know what it makes me think? See, look at this, right? This. I'm thinking that I need that. Now that helps. That helps a lot because now look at it. And so he didn't get coated. There we go. That's pretty fun, right? What a fun arrangement. So that's a fun 18 minutes, 16 minutes, 16 minutes that we spend together <laughs> to make a pretty arrangement like this. And just think how fun it is. Now, also, if you want to see other beautiful pictures of these, Kelly takes pictures many times and we put them up on Facebook and also on our Instagram page. So follow us on Instagram, uh, you bloom, follow us on Facebook at Jay Schwanke's Life in Bloom too. And um, pretty little peony arrangement, a little peony arrangement, right? Right. But isn't it beautiful? And how fun it will be to look at this for the next couple of days and enjoy it every second. And I'm just killing earwigs on the table. Nice. Because, you know, it's that time of year too. The little earwigs are coming out. So um, pretty peonies. Until next time, keep having fun with flowers.